Well, what's everyone? It's Matt Morozik, and this will be the intro to the Graven Labs Beast prototype build. This showed up today. Um, it's impressive. Uh, the prototype's pretty cool. I was smart this time, unpacked everything, and kind of figured out how it all went together before I started recording. <laughs> so I laid out the parts at first, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause and then go over like the beast parts and then the base parts, and then I'll show you how it goes together. So I just unpacked this um, a little while ago and took everything out and looked at it. Uh, this is pretty close to a production type casting. Um, the only things I'll have to do is a little bit on the fitting issues. Not that nothing fits, but some of it's loose. So I may have to do some rekeying a little bit. I'll have to add magnets in a few areas, but I am able to fit them all together and he's pretty solid um, without me worrying about like, if he's gonna fall off the base or anything like that. But this is just the layout of the parts and it takes up my entire bench so that um, that hand in the base is absolutely huge. Uh, I have to be quite honest, when um, I first saw the artwork of this, I was not impressed. Um, the guys at Gravin actually sent me a picture, like, hey, are you interested in this beast? Not necessarily to paint the prototype, but as a, as a customer, it's like, you know what? The, the, it doesn't, doesn't like, the, the, the rendering doesn't do anything for me. And then I saw, um, as I got further in the production, I was like, man, that looks really awesome. And then they asked me if I'd paint the prototype, like, yeah, man, of course. So here are all the pieces. Those are all the base pieces over there, the fingers, uh, the light up part and the fist. That's, that's an option that you have to do yourself. It is very easy to do if you want to. They made it easy to do that. They did not include a light or they, and they will not include a light in the kit or the pre-paints, but it's easy to do if you want. Um, that's just the cost savings thing they try to do. Um, and then here are all the beast parts. So I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna put the base parts to the side and go over the beast and show you that real quick. So uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so here are the beast parts laid out. You have a torso, two legs. Uh, you have a switch out head, so you get two heads. And then you get um, four hands, two fist and two open hands. And uh, the, the sculpt is really pretty amazing. Um, quite honestly, I don't know who sculpted this, so I'll have to wait for the guys to reply to me. I forget who the sculptor is, but it's really nice. Um, and overall, the beast himself fits together really, really well. Um, I'll go over a suggestion I have. And I'm, I would assume the factory would do this anyway, but I'm going to make, make the suggestion just from the, the initial dry fitting I did of the pieces. Um, but really, really nicely done. Uh, great texture in the fur. The toenails are just like look deadly. Really, really nice. And the same thing on this one. Great texture in the fur. And um, I'm going to come back to this foot in a minute, but. The way this is sculpted to fit in the base is absolutely stunning. It's really, really cool. Um, and then you got the two open, open hands. Uh, one is your left hand and one is the right hand. So on the left hand, it's just an open fist. There's nothing about it but it being open. But again, really nice um, texture to the um, fur and the nails look really, really nice. It's a, this is an interesting resin. It's not super heavy. Um, it's not hollow but it is not super heavy which is probably a good thing especially considering the way this is sculpted that he's kind of perched on top of these fingers it's probably a good thing it's a lighter weight resin the base is nice the base is like um, i'll get to that later but the base is is nice and hefty and then the other open hand which is the uh, right hand this is sculpted to hold a piece of one of the fingers and we'll get to that when i just put them together but again the way this is sculpted to fit around that piece is done really well and um I'll get to that when I, when I show you how that goes on, but uh, really done well. Nice fingernails, great texture in the fur. Same thing with the closed fist. These are exactly the same except for one's right, one's left. Again, nice texture, nice sculpt. And then uh, the torso. Again, more of the same, nice texture in the, in the fur. Simple pants with the X-Men logo, really nice. Now he's pretty hefty. It almost feels like he's hollow, but he's not. So it's interesting. And then the portraits. And this is when I first saw the artwork. These, these, this is what threw me off of the portraits. I wasn't real keen about the, the portraits, but as the sculpt went along, it's like, yeah, he's cool looking. So here's kind of his like, I wouldn't say nice face, but his smirking face. You know, he's still showing his teeth, squinting his eyes. You know, he means business. And then we got the, I'm just 
pissed off face. But again, great sculpt, um, great detail. The factory did a nice job. Um, out of the few prototypes I've done so far, and I have, so right now I have three prototypes in my possession. This is the best prototype casting I've gotten so far. It's pretty much what a production casting would be. But like I said, when I get to the base, I'll show you a few things that I'm going to have to work on just to make sure it's, it's stable and fits really well. Um, again, this is a prototype. So this is the first casting they've sent out. So they're still working on it. So, but yeah, really nice. Looks great. They've actually did a nice job of prepping this. So that's the beast pieces. And let me, I'll show you real quick kind of how it fits together because his pose is interesting. And uh, it doesn't make really sense until he's on the base, but this leg is way up here. And this leg is way up, so he's crouching on top of this hand. And the fit on this is absolutely really, really good. So I'm assuming, and this is what I would do, um, and this is probably what I'll do with this, is when I'm done painting, I'll epoxy these legs on the plate, in the place, because that's what makes him stable on top of the hand. These legs have to be solid, so I'm going to ask the guys um, if that's okay if, when I'm done if I epoxy the legs onto the prototype. I would assume they would ship it that way anyway. Um, obviously less pieces, the fewer the pieces, less chance of things breaking and chipping and stuff, especially in shipping. And these really have to be aligned correctly and solid um, in, order, in order for him to be solid on top of that hand, the way he's crouching, because his position is really, well, it's awkward. You know, you've seen the, the, the artwork. So those are the beast parts. So I'm going to pause again and bring out the base and show you that. Because that to me is the most impressive part of this. I'll be right back. Okay, so here's the main part of the base. This is what everything plugs into. And it's impressive. And I'm one of those guys that I like a really cool base. I know it's really about the character. But a base, the base can really tell a story of what is going on in a piece. And this does a very good job of that. So the base is very impressive on its own. Not to mention that the beast himself is cool, but you mix the two together, it's, it's impressive. So I'll just do a quick spin around. Not right now, this is the only thing that's on it. Nothing's been attached. So it comes like this right now. Again, this is being the prototype. On the base, I would assume that the pre-paints and the kits would show up the same way as this does. There's really no, other, there's nothing else that would come pre-attached. Um, but nice details back here in the back with the gears and these pipes coming out. Um, the fingers are absolutely massive. I'll, I'll do a side with my hand, but it's, it's, it's huge. The base is semi-hollow, meaning that I think it's hollow all around, but it's got a nice thick wall. When I pick it up, it doesn't feel flimsy or like I'm going to poke a hole in it or anything like that. So it's, it's hollow. Um, and a lot of guys complain about hollow castings. If it's done right, a hollow casting is perfectly fine as long as it's, it's um, robust enough to handle... You know picking up shipping and you know and all that stuff so let's get a measurement on the base because it's pretty big so for this guy depth wise just for the base you're going to need roughly 17 inches 16 and a half that's what i'm kind of getting off of that for your width you're going to need and again this is just kind of eyeballing it guys they have actual dimensions on their diagram again you're gonna need about 17 inches wide so it's a big base. It's going to take up some uh, width and some depth. Overall, he's not very high. He's only about 19 inches high, but this is cool. So I'm going to work on the back first because that's the easiest part. So uh, what you have is you have some of these uh, pipes that are coming out of hand. And these two pieces will actually peg together first. I'm going to do this in camera. So I've got a, a peg right there and a hole right there. And they peg together like so so like if if it was me and i was the factory i would send this as a salt as a one as one piece um there's no reason to send this as two pieces for a collector i would just make that one um now they did that obviously for casting purposes Th to cast this as one piece would be a nightmare so when they went and cut the sculpt i'll make sure i take this apart without dropping one of them i tend to drop things as i'm working test fitting this would be, it's much easier to, to cast this and that individually. Even this is a, a nightmare of a mold, um, but it's much easier to do it like this. And they fit together very well. And then this piece actually comes up in here as a nice big peg. And it comes right up in here in the base, like, just like that. So what I'll do is I'm gonna have to put some magnets in this thing. I'll put a magnet in that key right there and I'll just 
help hold it in place. So you got those coming out of the back. You get all some mechanical stuff. This will be fun to paint out because of nice metallics and oil and weather and stuff. Um, and you got the rock surrounding. And now the fingers. Uh, these only fit in one spot. And they've done a pretty good job of... Some of them are labeled, some of them aren't, but you don't need really labels. But look at this. This is the smallest finger. It's, it's huge. I mean, it's massive. So that goes there. Then we're going to back out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. All right, so that's the smallest finger. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Uh, the next one is actually numbered number four, which is this guy. Again, just this, this finger by itself is like nine inches long. That pigs and these have nice big pegs, but they're still a little loose. So I may actually rekey these, um, just so they're a little more solid. Especially this one because his foot goes up on this one. So I want to make sure that that's actually that one's really solid, um, and this one is too. So his foot goes one foot goes here, and one foot goes up in that peg. So those are the most important parts of this base. This is already casted. It's a solid piece in this, and this is pretty solid. So I may do a little rekeying on this just so it's a solid fit. Um, again, this is the prototype, so things may not fit exactly the way they're supposed to, but this is pretty damn good. This was, this one's numbered also. Oh, no, it's not numbered, but it doesn't need to be numbered because it only goes in one spot and goes right there. And this needs, um, this will need a magnet for sure. And it goes right there. And then on this piece, you'll see that the tip is missing because you have two options. You have the option of it not damaged. And you're seeing that this wants to fall over. So what I'll probably do on this guy, on this finger, is I'll probably put a nice big peg in there. And then it actually sits on the base here. And I may throw a magnet in the base. So magnet in the base and a pin. Um, we'll see. I could also get away with just rekeying it with some Aves epoxy and do my trick where I put Aves in the hole, slather the finger in petroleum jelly and squeeze it in there and then clean it up. And then when I pull it out, it's a, an exact fit. That's usually the best thing to do to get it the best fit. Um, so I don't know, I haven't decided. Now this finger's solid, so it's heavy. You have the option of a, a solid finger like that, or you have the option of the finger that's being torn out or this part of the finger and then the other parts in this hand and that goes like that so depending on which fist you have in your hand determines which tip you put in so we're just going to put in the um this one for now and then the last part of the vase is this finger and again i'll have this this labeled with the number two and it only goes in one place this is the only part right now that when i move the base around it wants to fall out because it's just really heavy on towards this side so it wants to fall out so um, a good way to do that would be to put a magnet um, uh, in this area right here and in the base because this key is big enough it just needs something to hold it hold it that way you wouldn't be able to do a pin here you wouldn't be able to put like a, a pin there because there's no way you can pin it and get in the key so just a, a big magnet right there will hold that in place just fine because nothing goes on top of that it's not to bear any weight and then the last piece of the base is the clear lens, which is right here. This is actually casted very nicely. And for clear, les clear resin, it's done. It's pretty clear already. You shoot that with some clear coat and it goes like glass. And it actually fits in here and it fits only one way. So there's a, a key in there. So if you want to light this sucker up, there's, a, I guess, a couple ways you could do it. You could um, just make it so you pull this off and there's a light in there. Or you make it so where you kind of glue that in place and then you drill a hole from the bottom of the base and put a bulb in that way. Um, it'd be easiest just to make the lens removable. Um, but the trick with that is that you could get light leaks around the edges, which you would have to epoxy up. So depends on what you want to do. So there's the base put together. Pretty, pretty impressive. Um, yeah, just really cool. We'll do a spin around that finger. Like I said, that finger may fall off because it's, it's pretty front heavy right now. And see how it just kind of fell off. <laughs> so that needs a magnet and that 
in that section just to hold it up. But lots of great detail on this piece. Um, yeah, this will be fun to paint. This painting, this is in my wheelhouse. You know, I, do a lot, I used to do a lot of mechs. All right, so now we got the base together. Let's put the beast on. So first thing we're going to do is there's, uh, there's a hole in this finger, and there's actually a metal tube for the pin, which is great. So it's nice and solid. Um, so I found the best way to do this is to put this foot on first, and this is, and I'll come in closer, but I want to show you how this finger is sculpted, or rather the foot is sculpted around this foot. You see all the claw marks in there? I mean, it's just, it's really nicely done. This goes in there, and those claws fit in there perfectly. So you really get the sense that he just gripped that and just crunched, just crunched that metal. Really nicely done. And then, in order to do this so he doesn't fall, is I put the other leg in the torso, like so. And then he's leaning, actually I'm going to do this first. Put that in. And once he's together, he's, he's, um, he's pretty solid. Once the legs are like in place permanently, there's that finger again. I'm just gonna take that. I'm just gonna take this finger off so it doesn't keep falling. Um, I, it, the finger would not break. It would break my toe. <laughs> so there he is, perched up on the on the hand. But I love kits that look like they shouldn't work. Like the pose is weird, or I like the Zenar Daredevil where he's hanging out in the middle of the air. I love kits and sculpts like that because that's a hard thing to engineer and to get that to work um, it's a balancing act so the sculpt and the way it's casted it all has to work for something like this to work and even though I don't have anything glued or pinned it, he's stable I'm not I'm not gonna fling him around like a frisbee but so you can see right now there's a there's a gap in the leg right there but once that gets pinned and glued it'll be solid and it'll be really good so right now there's just a little bit of gap in there because he's not pinned or glued, but just really, really cool. So yeah, looking nice. So then we'll go through the different options as far as faces and stuff. I'm gonna come down the camera a little bit because really you have to kind of look at him at a lower angle because he's kind of looking down. So we're gonna come there. Okay, for his left hand, you have the option of a fist or an open hand. I tend to like the open hand personally. I just think it looks great. I love the sculpt in this hand. Um, so there's that. And then for the right hand, you have the option of a fist, which also looks good, but I just still think that open, that open hand is very menacing. He looks, just the hand makes him look pissed. <laughs> so we're gonna do that configuration first. Okay, and then for the portraits, let's put on, we'll call this his smiley portrait, because it looks like, kind of looks like he's smiling, even though he's not. <laughs> so I like this, because you have to get, this is one of those pieces where you, the, the viewing angle is different too, which makes it really interesting. There's a lot of interesting things about this sculpt that make it different than other pieces. So, excuse the shaky camera, but you really kind of have to look at him from like down here. But look at that. I mean, just staring right at you. Just really menacing. And then let's put on the other portrait, which is my favorite. The FU, here I come. Boom. And the magnets in the heads are very good. That magnet, magnets in the heads and hands right now are perfect. They're, they're not strong, they're not real strong, but they're not weak. They're just like the perfect amount. You don't want a magnet that's too strong because if it pops in there, you have ch a chance of paint chipping or resin chipping, but you don't want it too weak where it's going to fall out. So these are like the perfect strength on these. So now the only other option you have is with the uh, open fist on the, um, on the right hand. So I'm going to come in close to you and show you kind of how that works because it's a little trick. And I would guess that this would come as one piece. There's a good shot right there. Boom. Right in your face. Okay. So I'm going to back the camera a little bit because I need to. So this piece right here is like a broken off fingertip and this fist goes around it. And it took me a little while to figure this out. 
So the way this works right now, and again, I would assume that this would come together on one piece because as soon as this is painted and I go to put this fist in and, and get in, I'm going to scratch a little paint, which means I'll have to touch it up. So um, hopefully the factory will paint this, paint this, put them together, and then touch up the paint. Because what I got to do right now is I got to put it in there and actually have to twist the hand a little bit. It's a really tight fit. But once it's in there, it's perfect and it's not coming out. So there's that broken off finger on the base. So that's where this switch out comes. And then this piece goes in like that. And then you switch out the, um, the right hand. This one up here comes off. Oh, no, sorry. The other hand, this hand. And what they did on this for the prototype, they actually put a pin because what they probably did is they had the magnet and when they put, the, put it in there with the magnet, they realized the magnet wasn't strong enough for both these pieces. So they added a pin. So um, they'll either have to do the same thing here on, on the finished pieces or add a much stronger magnet because this is a heavy piece. But with the pin and the magnet, it works. Okay, hold on, I gotta, I gotta look at this from the side because I gotta get the pin in there. This work. Nope, nope, hold on. I put it in the wrong hand. Okay, yeah, sorry. I don't know my right from my left. <laughs> it goes up here. There's a hole in there for the pin and the magnet. Yeah, because the magnet right now wouldn't be strong enough just to hold that on its own. So that goes in there like that. So then you have that option like that, which I tend to like that better. I think that looks really cool. Again, it kind of tells a story. And then, um, so that piece goes to the side. And then I would, personally, I would do the open fist. That's, that's what I would do. And then um, we'll put this other finger back in so you can see it all complete. So, there he is. Really cool. So my goal is to get this done. I'm, I'm behind on projects. I've already talked to Marcus about that. And uh, everyone else that has stuff with me, I'm behind. So um, I've got like two prototypes in front of this. Uh, and I, I got a lot on my plate. So I'm going to do my best to get and There it goes. <laughs> like I said, the finger wouldn't break. I'm just glad my toe wasn't there because it would have broken my toe. So I'll just leave that off. Um, I got a lot on my plate, a lot to do. So... I know I need to get prototypes done as quickly as possible so the guys can get them in production, but um, he's an impressive piece. Not real tall. I think I measured him earlier and he was 19 inches. So for you guys that have height concerns, uh, the top of his elbow is just right at 19 inches. So height-wise, it shouldn't be too big of an issue. The only problem you'd have is maybe if your cabinets aren't uh, deep enough, but there he is, man. Uh, nice work on this, guys. Really, really nice job on this. Like I said, when I first saw it, I wasn't too keen on it. And the further along it got in the sculpt and everything, I was like, dude, that's really cool. Um, so I'm really happy they asked me to do the prototype because it'll be a fun one to do. So there you go, guys. That's the Graven Labs Beast prototype. Um, so the next video will be um, probably um, is it, is the next video will be a while because like I said I got I've got projects like out the wazoo on right now but um, I may or may not videotape like doing the rekeying and stuff a lot of times my videos are very repetitive I know like guys to see builds on their personal projects even though the processes are pretty much the same on every project um, so and I, I like doing the videos. They just they do slow me down a little bit. So sometimes I'll just say, hey, look, I'm just going to keep going because I can work faster. Um, and some guys are okay with that. Other guys really like the videos. But there you go. So this guy is sold out. Um, so, you know, drop Marcus Chow a, a message. And, um, you know, if there's anyone that drops out or anything, you know, I don't know if he has a waiting list or not, but... I'd be surprised if he doesn't. <laughs> it's a cool piece. 
So there you go. This is Matt Morozik. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye.